Sabaha everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today's video is gonna help you customize your device beyond what you normally can out of the box. This is referencing an application called GoodLock 2018 by Samsung for Galaxy devices running Oreo. So the basic benefit here is that you're gonna be getting routines, you're gonna be getting customizations on the lock screen, you're gonna be able to change the recent applications and more with this application. It's one application that has a lot of different modules beneath it that will make your life a lot better. This is TK, let's check it out. Here is the GoodLock 2018 application. The version, just to show you guys the latest one, is version 1.0.00.32. Once you have that set up, make sure all of the other modules that are beneath it are also updated. Uh, Lockstar is the one that I was using to customize our lock screen that I was showing you guys. You'll notice right there, this is the existing one. You can create a new one by adding it here. You can customize the type of uh, unlocking mechanism. So in this situation, I have swipe up uh, or swipe. App shortcuts in, uh, interactions are also in, uh, in, included here. You can Samsung default touch, or double touch, and you can customize those with the, within the app. Uh, keep system wallpaper. This is in case you want to keep the system wallpaper for your lock screen. You can do that so you can prevent this application from overriding it. Uh, but other than that, you can go in there, you can edit, you can customize it by going in pictures in your gallery, you can select different options, different backgrounds. And then once you have that selected, you can go in there and select the clock placement and put it in. And one of the new options that we got with this is the ability to actually move the clock manually. Uh, you can move it up, move it down, and they give you like a little guide in the middle to kind of tell you where it is to be centered. Uh, you can also change the visibility to different options here as far as apps, notification, uh, the help buttons. And once you're done with all of this, you just say save. I'm gonna say cancel, and then it'll save it as a custom style. And you can create multiple ones to switch between them whenever you want. Uh, you can also customize this using the clock face, which I'll jump back into the other ones later. But you can select here, and this is how I was able to put mine in there. You can click into the more, you can see all the new ones that we have now, the bicycle, the old time, the alarm clock. And of course, we just have hits quarter to one. It's very nice, uh, as opposed to saying 12.45. So depending on how you want to say your clock, you can customize it to the way you want. And of course, center it and put it in the position where you want it. Uh, you can also put that in this if you have it on the always on display if you want to do that. I don't have always on turned on, so that's why it's not here. The next one I want to show you guys is the Quick Star. The Quick Star is very nice, simple application that allows us to customize a few parts of our UI. Uh, the coloring, this is just a notification panel. Now I'm running a theme, it's not gonna work on mine, but for you, if you're not running a full theme on your system, turn it on and customize the color and then save different profiles so you can switch between them whenever you'd like. Uh, you can also turn on the simple indicators as far as the things that you want or you don't wanna show here in the notification panel. So for me, if I, let's say I wanna go in there, I wanna disable the battery, I can hide that and save some space and you'll notice I'll have more space here for notifications. Of course, I like to keep it there, but this is again, to your liking, you could just turn it on and disable what you don't want. The last thing we hear is notification panel option to be able to jump to multi-window functionality from an app directly in the notification panel. The example I would say is here, this is one of my routines that's running and we're gonna talk about that in a second. I'll switch to the right a little bit. You'll notice there's that little double screen and that means I can open up this notification in split screen without having to open the app or go to recents and try to open it up. You jump into split screen right away very simple and very easy. Uh, the next thing I want to show you guys real quick is the task changer. This did receive an update as well. It's been great since the beginning. We still have all the different functions here on how to be able to customize those. I like to keep the rotation down, although you can do cube. And by just hitting the recent, you'll notice right there, it shows up right away. I also have it set to center the current background app, which means if I'm running this app, it'll center it directly. It's not going to just fan them out. Um, and I'm just going to select it. I like to go ahead and keep it as rotation down. Uh, there is a mini mode in case you do want to play with mini mode. Uh, I like to keep it standard uh, just for my preferences, but you can make this if you'd like to have more information to see more in the background. Uh, but by default, it does not blur the background. I like to do that. The, way, the, the other thing I wanted to show you guys, the main update to this is when you go into the Recents app, you notice we have that little app drawer now. If I click this, any app that supports split screen will work now as uh, the ability to be able to launch it straight from your Recents app. So an example would be YouTube. I'm gonna click and hold. I can either do a pop-up window or I can do split screen on the top, split screen on the bottom. And if I do pop-up window, it just shops right itself. Um, I have another video in my uh, in the description for you guys, the last video before this one specifically, showing how to be able to turn on dark mode on your YouTube application. No root and no special APKs. You just turn it on using your PC. Uh, routines is very functional as far as they give us the ability of customizing and automating our system. Uh, and by deep, what I mean automation, meaning normally if you plug in your headset to your phone, 
this doesn't happen to your phone. But for me, because I've customized it, every time I plug in a piece of head my headset into the device, my phone will automatically launch Google Play Music. And that's my favorite music application, but for you, it could be something else. And here's how the routine is set up. The condition is for my headphones to be connected. Once that's on, turn on Google Play Music. I called it music and it's very simple. You can go in there, change it, add the condition to be either a time and place, a phone status, basically, like I said, Wi-Fi on, Wi-Fi off, an event, either receiving a call, launching an application, or adding a widget to the home screen. And of course, you can add the trigger here is what are the options you can allow your phone to do. And these things have been updated, of course. So you can just customize and go into settings, status, actions, as well as events and plugins. Uh, the first thing is edge lighting. Now edge lighting has been updated and it does have a few new options from what we had at the beginning. And this is really intended for the phone whenever the phone is facing down. It's essentially running on the edge here. So you can go into the effects, there's a few. We have basic, multicolor, glow, glitter, fluid, boomerang, galaxy, as well as loop and celebrate. And you can go in there and customize not only the color, but the transparency. Some of them, you also have the ability of customizing different options. So we'll go to multicolor. You can change the color, the transparency, as well as the width. So I can make the width very thick and it becomes much more uh, omni obvious for us to see how it looks like. You can see how the customizations are shown there. And of course you can go in there and change it, save it. And then the next time you get a notification and you do have the, the, edge, the edge lighting turned on, you're gonna get that functionality and it's gonna look really nice having a nice glow effect around your device. Edge Touch is a really functional application that allows us to limit where the touch functionalities on our device are going to be. Now, this is my touch notification, you notice right there. The green ones are, are gonna be the no touch and the orange ones or the yellow ones here are pretty much where my touch uh, areas are gonna be. And I've already customized it to this sensitivity zone so that I don't have any false touches on the top. Now, this does not interact with the side uh, launcher that we have built into Samsung. This is mostly for these little two launchers and I'll show you guys in the next application. We'll go out. So one-handed operation is a really functional app to be able to use to customize or at least kind of replace the navigation bar. And the reason I say this is I can swipe to the top here and I can go back, I can launch my recent applications, I can go home. And essentially it's basically a gesture-based navigation system to your, to your Samsung device so that it kind of releases the need for you to have to go back and down. So if you're holding the device very nice and you have your areas set up correctly, you can actually go back straight using this or just launch your recent, uh, go back home here. Or I think if we don't, you can open up your recent applications and do most of the things you can do here. Uh, and you can customize it by going into one-handed mode. When you open it up, you see right there, swipe left, swipe uh, right settings, left settings, uh, vibration level, transparency, size, position, and you have to turn it on for it to actually function. And once it is, you're pretty much set, then you can customize the different options that you have. The last thing I wanna show you guys is Sound Assistant. Now, Sound Assistant for me turns on every time I touch my volume button. And I have it turned on here to be for 30 seconds, for three seconds. And once that turns on, it's a quick access panel to audio customizations directly into your device. Now this is directly to the EQ of your Samsung device. So by default, you'll notice right there, I have the volume level for the whatever app I'm running. If I was running two different apps, I can customize the volume for each one of them. So the example would be here. And you'll notice right there, I have a system level volume as well as Google Play Music. Now Google Play Music is playing at high. I can make this into 30% and keep my system level being at high or medium. So very nice customization. And you can use this with multiple apps. So if you had multiple apps running different volume levels, you can customize them in reference to the main, the way the main one runs. So you don't have to have everything at 100%. Now where it becomes very functional is that I'm actually able to go in directly into the EQ built-in functionality. I can customize the different balance, go to advanced, basic, and all of this, you notice, is still sitting in the pop-up mode. Now, if I go to the full screen mode, this takes me directly into the sound quality and uh, NFX. You can customize more things. The equalizer is turned on here. You can go in there, customize adapt sound to be able to have it customized and tuned directly for you. Definitely the best way to customize our devices in 2018. A lot of cool features, a lot of cool things were added in from the original release of GoodLock 2018. And keep in mind, there is an original version for Nougat based devices that's just called GoodLock that's in the app store. So if you're not running Oreo, this is not gonna work for you. You could just use the original version that doesn't have 2018 on it. Now, again, it's different slightly as far as the functionality, but it will give you some more customizations. And I did do a video on that one last year, so I'll give you guys a link to that video from before. Uh, 2018 version of Good Luck definitely looks very promising. It will be obviously compatible with the Note 9, as the Note 9 is releasing with Android 8.1. Uh, I'm, I haven't heard that much as far as how Android P is going to be affected, but I really would love to see a lot of these features built into Samsung devices, as there's no reason really for them to be a separate app. Routines, the ability to change the recent app, customizing your lock screen, I think those should just be native things. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Thank you very much for the support, and hope you guys like these videos of customizing and personalizing your devices. This is TK.
see you guys in the next video